And then the, the struggling people keep struggling and needs to change. And I think with our AI, we're able to do that. And, and then it's, about, it's also about acceptance. Um, we can do it alone. I'm fighting this battle with our data scientists. But we really need the other side, which is the 99% of struggling filmmakers and producers and all of that. We need them to join this battle because it's going to stay the same. You know, Hollywood hasn't changed for 100 years. Why do you think it would change in the next five years, it won't unless you take the control back. So that was in a nutshell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, you, so you're, you, your mission is to empower storytellers and, and writers. So, you, so, they, so the technology gives them the uh, understanding of how, how they can improve their improve their work and not just make is it about making it sort of more commercial or both or quality wise I, it's about validation uh, you, you have a project and you need to know um, what is the potential of this project that I'm uh, you know that I, that I want to pursue it shows you what the potential is for example uh, I'll, I'll give you a few examples um, we opened up our AI to every independent, so it's not just B2B, it's now B2C, and, and it's all on our website, and you can see we, we changed the pricing for the independents to a tenth what the companies are paying, because we know uh, of the struggles of the independents. Uh, and, and for example, what we had, it was, it was widely successful. Um, we, we get many scripts for, from a lawyer or, or someone who runs a bakery, and they all write or they all want to pursue a career in film, and they send us their script. We analyze it, and we give them back the results. And for example, what we've noticed, you know, I, I have to be honest, if we analyze 100 scripts a month for independence, probably, just uh, being fair, probably 90% will be crap. Uh, it's, it's just not a good analysis. And then you have, um, you know, probably th three or four scripts that are just pearls, hidden pearls. And, and when we gave the analysis back to, for example, um, uh, this guy that actually is a top lawyer in New York, and he said, oh my God, I'm surprised because he's been working on the script on the side for about eight years. And the analysis was amazing. And he said, can you help me get this project somewhere? All of a sudden, we're now as a tech company in this position where you analyze scripts and a, a bunch of them are not great. And then you have a handful that just have amazing analysis. And we, as, as data scientists, think about it and, and, and go like, okay, we need to do something with this, with this material. So we contact the screenwriters again and we tell them, listen, are you open, for, for the, uh, are you open to this? If we just uh, pass your script on and the analysis on to you, for example, the studios that we work with or the distributor or a film fund that we work with. And they're very happy because all of a sudden you're doing something that, that, that they've been trying to get to for years. And, and this is something that we actually did for a few screenwriters. Their scripts today are being, uh, are being actually considered by very big parties. So you're becoming a marketplace almost. Almost, mm -hmm. yes, without intention. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Can I ask a question, actually? So in, there is the case of a super positive outcome and people are looking for validation. What happens in the 99 other cases? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's, uh, I, I know you, they're attached their, to their material yeah, yeah, and, and we give them the, the, the analysis and sometimes it's not what they want to see. But don't you want an AI that's so honest with you instead of, you know, having the typical yeah. words of, oh, great, I'll, I'll get in touch. Oh, yeah. great. Well, you know, <laughs> so that's the answer. Exactly. Because yeah. that's what, what most people hear. Uh, they, they spend so much money and they travel back and forth and, and they have then some companies say, oh, yeah, we'll love it. We'll get in touch. And in touch means within the next decade, maybe. <laughs> so at least... I want the brutal approach in the sense, if it's crap, I rather want to hear it today. So I won't be spending any time on, 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 on continuing working on crap. I'd rather start a new project or I will take a, a complete U-turn and change the story's perspective. So you, you want to move forward as fast as possible. And I think even yeah. with a bad advice, uh, well, bad. A bad outcome. Yeah, bad, even with yeah. a bad outcome, it is an answer. It's better than trying, you know. Uh, trying in vain and, exactly. you know, plugging away at the same thing. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Very good. I, I, well, I, I have one, one question before we, 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 we move on. What, what do you see uh, the most common thing that the AI, AI picks up with people? What, what's the most common flaw 
in a project? Um, well, I know for a fact that a lot of people, this is a concern that comes uh, up every time. They think technology, AI, will only uh, give a green light to uh, the highly commercial uh, movies, you know, formulaic projects. But it's one of the biggest misconceptions because we did this, we did a, a very big proof of concept with one of the studios and they gave us, um, you know, uh, a pile of scripts, uh, a combination of, you know, the typical IP movies and, and uh, the smaller ones. And, and we, when we did the analysis, the smaller ones have such a bigger return on investment. With smaller ones, I mean movies that have a much smaller budget in the, in the range of one to five million. The stories are so great and the AI actually almost favors the smaller projects over the bigger ones. And it's so hard to explain that to people because they're, it's just a mindset. They think, you know, it will only get the, I don't know, the, the, the Fast and Furious 20. Mm. <laughs> only that one will get a green light. It's the biggest misconception because when you see the analysis for um, smaller films, people are always so surprised. They go like, the AI picked that? And it is the case. The AI knows a good story because our, our algorithms were trained on storylines, on act structure, on emotional analysis. It's not, you know, throw an algorithm on a data set and let's see what comes out of it. Oh, the, if, the, if the hero wear, wear, wears a, a blue shirt, <laughs> it will have high box office. No, it's not voodoo science. I know com <laughs> there are a lot of companies doing this. I call this voodoo science because it's crap. And, and, and no, we spent three years Three years just doing hardcore research and development, labeling data. Uh, it took so much effort uh, to, to, to build this uh, because we cared about uh, how stories are structured. Everything that's out there, you know, about story structure, every book was being read. We actively thought about, okay, what kind of features are important to, to content creators and that actually... Uh, have a high weight uh, when it comes to parameters in, in, in predicting performance. So it's not, uh, and I, I know the conception is uh, that a lot of companies ju just do run the algorithm and just do data. No, we took our time to develop something that is of high quality. And, and that's why the AI is capable of, of, of analyzing script and saying, listen, tiny budget, we predict only 2 million budget, but the return on investment on this one, like a get out, for example, 5 million budget, our AI predicted a, a, a return on, on investment of 1,000%. Um, many, many cases, we have so many uh, movies in our data set that we analyze for, for companies that are tiny, and they were, you know, I was, as we would say, outliers, but for us, it's not outliers. The AI is just so good in, in, in recognizing qualitative material. <laughs> I have a question on that. Do you think that that can change the studio's view on what is going to be a commercial success for them? Are, are you already seeing signs? Well, um, we, we have three studios uh, actively using our, our AI today. And, um, and, and I came back two weeks ago from, uh, from LA from a big meeting. And this is what we hear from studios. They will never change. So I've given up on, on trying to change them. So they will never change. They, um, they want an AI that is never wrong when predicting uh, uh, the, the, the hidden successes. So they, they, they would punish us if we would give a, a red light to a movie that did unbelievable, unbelievable yeah. good. Yeah. But they think it's okay if we uh, give a green light to movies that were uh, such a big failure. So if we say... Uh, for example, Transformers Thousands will do a billion at the box <laughs> office and it ends up doing, you know, 10 million. Yeah. It's not a punishment. It's okay. But if, if we uh, tell them not to make it and God forbid it makes a, <laughs> a billion, they would just, you know, stop working with us. They so, don't so, want to be held back yeah. in the franchises, but yes. they'll take a hit. Yes. Them. And they actively, they want to be remembered uh, by the big movies. Yeah. They, they, even though they had a few small uh, movies made in, in 2019 that did tremendously well, it's not the icing on the cake. This is something that they told us personally. So for studios, it will always be about the big projects. Mm. 
And regarding the AI, um, did you find a way to see how the AI got to that decision? Because from the point of view of technology, as, as far as I kind of understand from, it's, it cannot really justify the decisions it made. Um, mm -hmm. How are you finding the process in, in mm -hmm. understanding how yeah. it got to that result? Uh, it's, what, we, what you're saying is true because a lot of times the AI just thinks because it thinks that, uh, you know, it's the black box approach. Uh, they, they tell you this is something great and, and you go like, why? Well, because it is. And there's a, <laughs> there's no answer. Mm -hmm. uh, but in our case, for example, um, because we, we uh, featured engineers, so basically we, we uh, created the, uh, our own features. So we're able to see what kind of features rank very high, for example, in predicting uh, commercial performance. And, I can, and, and I'm giving away my secret sauce. <laughs> but the truth is that the emotional analysis of your, um, of your characters is so important. Uh, if, if 450 parameters go into a predictive model, that's a lot, you know? Um, uh, but I can tell you in the top 10, they have, they outweigh the rest, the 300 or 400 something. So the top 10 is really about the emotional analysis. Your act structure is very important as well. It's something that we, um, you know, never thought that that would be ranked up there, the act structure. But again, it's very important. Mm. These two features rank extremely high in, in uh, predicting um, uh, commercial performance. There you go. So it's, 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 and other things, like you said, it's like, oh God, I have no idea why the AI is saying this. <laughs> just just <laughs> ask him, is he spoke? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> That's fascinating. Um, so let, let, we, 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 let's, let's move on because we, I'm sure we're going to circle back to some of these things. So, um, Maria, we're now, we, we've now got our script. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, uh, it, it's validated. Uh, and we want to, we want to get financed. Uh, now t t tell me about Film Chain. What, what, what was the origin of Film Chain and why? why uh, and then yeah, tell me about how it works, the blockchain and everything. <laughs> so definitely my background it was uh, was a as a former producer and line producer so I come from storytelling filmmaking background um, and I I uh, had a, an amazing uh, encounter again with my with my co-founder Irina who comes from much more of a mathematical and tech background and uh, governance and economics so we joined forces because as you said, um, I, as a producer, we were having these these amazing productions, and we were believing in the script with or without an approval at that point. And it was it, it really felt like the moment that producers were ending their productions, which was generally a long struggle. And and we we know the reports in the UK they're quite disastrous about you know, the years that it's taking and producers being paid around £10,000 per year. Um, so those were some reports that came out uh, two weeks ago and that just put everyone into like a very dark depression. <laughs> um, the, the, the hard realization of how much producers are, are actually paid for the very long work they do. And after they shoot the filming, it just felt like they are giving away their their baby and it's all very passive so you just sit and wait it's just a sit and wait game and it takes years to see any money and then it takes even more years to get any data around it so we before film chain were as we were doing big couch we were working on like co-financing these eight films through another good kind of tech um, a tech solution and and we were like wow this is just three years later there's like zero information and money coming back so how did we get to this to this bottleneck and uh, the 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 realization was how there's no infrastructure so there's no infrastructure for money and information to flow and it's this beautiful name of, of a waterfall, the recoupment schedule, um, but it's, uh, it's actually one of the most terrifying concepts <laughs> that a producer can think of because it's this uh, negotiation between all of the stakeholders 
sometimes you can get like a hundred people, investors, producers, co-producers, actors, crew, everyone who gave their blood, sweat and tears to make this. And they expect a share of the cake if the cake is like really tasty and everyone wants a piece of the cake. So um, for us, it was absolutely kind of shocking how the entire back end of the industry was so old school was manual, spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets, human errors, everyone just doing the work uh, in between other productions with other jobs. You know, they had to sell films, they had to produce other films, they had to distribute films. So doing reports and, and money was always just taking ages. And we were also talking to producers and we were just kind of putting in kind of the, 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 the mind frame. So we were saying, do you feel that you're the owner of this project? And the answer was coming back as, as no. So it really felt like they were stripped off their power because they felt that now it's just a matter of marketing, sales, distribution, exploitation, and they, they, did, did, they no longer had a voice in how how the, the, the film performs. And um, I'm, I'm, I, I would love to hear more of, of your story afterwards to complete that. Um, so we basically built the infrastructure for money and information to flow. We thought it's now it's the right time because finally the industry is exposed to these huge shifts where you have streamers, technical platforms, you log on to dashboards. So it's not pen and paper anymore or PDFs, at least as a, as a, a daily practice. So we have moved everything from the recoupment schedule, reconciliation of, of 50 contracts with co-producers, financiers, and sales agents, and just move everything on dashboards and, and, and clearly, transparently, speak to every single stakeholder what is the money owed to them and when money comes in what is the performance of their film so essentially we are uh, the, the the 2020 version of a collection service but where uh, how how people described us as investors described us um, well what the filmmakers and investors have the you know have the finger on the pulse they go weekly and they check out, they get notifications, 100,000 came in, this is how the money was split, are you okay with this, do you want to challenge this, is this the right territory, is that what you expected, great, no objection, then here's your money, withdraw, in two hours you have it in your bank account. And what was fascinating to us when we started doing that more and more, because we have all these productions now that started uh, recouping revenues, is that um, this is my kind of favorite uh, case study. Um, uh, some a larger amount came in, and uh, an investor had withdrawn on a Monday. Oh, I don't know, it was like whatever, thousands of, of euros. And then on a Wednesday, they had a small festival fee. <laughs> so they had 35 euros <laughs> in, in their wallet. And they still click withdraw. <laughs> they, they wanted that 35. They didn't want to wait till like Friday because Friday will be a new, new incoming gross receipts. So that's when we, we realized like, wow, that's, that's actually sticky. Like people just go on like on a mobile banking app that they want to see their balance. And if there's money there for them, they, they want to have it and they want to spend it. They want to just go out for dinner because they just made another 35 euros, you know? So, so information and money should circulate. And we should no longer have this, this, you know, years of waiting. And it is a paradigm shift because when, when it's a passive approach, when you just sit and wait and you just send these like first polite emails like, hi, just wondering, how is it going? You know, did we sell anywhere? And, and then, you know, you just get more passive aggressive and then it gets to like <laughs> breaking all friendships that ever were um, like at some point. And, and, and then as we were talking to stakeholders, everyone was just like, it's not me. I haven't done anything. It's just like not working. I, I, I you know, there were just no money in it. So 
we, we, we were definitely, we saw how we were, we're fixing the trust because when you have transparency, you're able to build trust and everyone knows what, well, this is what came in. These were the deals that were made. This is how much we sold. And, um, and this is it. At the same time, if things are going well or they're going moderately well, you can go as a producer to your next financier and say, well, in 12 months, we were able for the financier in top tier, the first recoupment, to recoup 70%. These are actual statistics that you can go to your next financier and finance your next film. Okay, it didn't recoup fully, but it did this much. And people have like the, 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 the sense that, oh, I'm talking to a business person. I'm talking to someone who wants a return on investment. I'm talking with someone who, who wants to, you know, to have eyeballs on, on that, that production, want to make the most out of that film. And uh, that was, was hugely empowering. So accessing money and data, uh, we feel that these are the weapons you need in order to, to survive in this industry and to, to create this, this level of trust between the stakeholders.